and welcome to my channel. I am Zodiac Bandit, and today we have some spoilers for recent episodes of Critical Role and potential spoilers if my theory happens to be right. So if you don't want to have anything spoiled for you now or in the future, potentially, click off. See you later. Peace. See you on Friday for the recap. Maybe next Tuesday for the next video. Spoilers. And with that out of the way, I can move on to the topic of the video, and that is, is Bodor evil? And I am of the theory, or thought process, that he's some sort of evil person or somebody trying to get the Bell's Hells to steer away from lewdness, ruidus, or whatever is going on. I do think there is some sort of evil, malicious intent behind this character, and I don't think I'm the only one who's, you know, alone in this. Uh, I've definitely had a conversation or two with people on my YouTube channel, or it just seen people on Twitter or in the chats saying the same thing, that there is something going on with Bodor. So, I have to reinforce this somehow, which is what this video is going to be about. I also am not the only person, like, publicly saying this. Denise, in the game, is being some somewhat suspect of Bodor now. Trying to listen to what Bodor is saying, trying to potentially steal from Bodor in the last episode, to try to figure out what's going on. So there's a few things that I want to sort of talk about and bring up that might reinforce this idea that Bodor is potentially evil, nefarious, whatever word you want to use to say it. I don't know if he's necessarily in line with Ludinus, or if he's just in line with someone else who's trying to stop the Bell's Hells. I don't know the exact specifics, but I just get the feeling he's evil somewhere, somehow. First and foremost, I want to talk about his magic or his power usage. You don't just wake up at level 9. He has incredible powers of magic and like really devastating magic lightning bolt inflict wounds and he uses them in the proper moments in the proper time which to me doesn't make much sense he claims that he doesn't know what he's doing but the first thing that we see him do once someone startles him is he shoots lightning bolt out of his back which to me is just like yeah it could have happened but you don't just wake up a level nine not knowing what you're doing i do believe there's a small bit of bodor that might be telling the truth that he's like new to his powers but i he just uses them way too often and way too proficiently for me to think that he's not lying about this he used lightning bolt like three or four times in the church like in the right scenarios and making sure he did it right he then used inflict wounds in the proper way he went up and touched the person on the or the angel on the face used inflict wounds to me there's just in my opinion no good reason or explanation to why this guy who's never used magic is so proficient with it at least with prism who claims that she's never like truly cast a spell before this point she's been trained and she's learned and she's understood the way magic works bodor just says he doesn't have a clue about it but then every time he sort of needs to use it or every time like someone asks him hey cast firebolt on this dummy we just made he does it pretty proficiently i think he's lying about this now there is the argument that the pipe showed that this was his best moment his claim for that best moment thing wasn't that he cast the spell on demand. It was that he felt like he belonged somewhere. That he felt like he was in a group. So I think that's his sort of way of circumventing this whole magic thing. Because he's seen the pipe work before. And if he's evil, I'm think guaranteeing you he's trying to figure out a way to weasel around it. Because he could either use that moment or he could have very easily use the moment where he killed an angel to sort of circumvent this sort of pipe magic thing showing his greatest moment. I think this character is lying about his magic use because he seems way too proficient with it. But that's just me. I also think there's no reason for him to just wake up at level 9. That's just kind of silly to me. I would love to ex get some sort of explanation. Maybe his parents were extremely powerful sorcerers in their own right. But until we have that answer, this just seems really suspect to me. Next, I want to talk about him sowing seeds of wanting to give up sowing seeds of potentially we can't do this as every conversation they seem to have about ruidus lewdness or any of the enemies they've been sort of going up against and even the potential strength of the bell's hells he's shot them downward he has never once said oh i believe you guys can do this he has always said we can't like do you think you can kill a god killer or do you think you can defeat the guy who we can't scry on those are two things he said within the last episode of Campaign 3 of Critical Role. And it just seems like he wants them to think down on themselves, that he, they don't believe they can do it. He wants them to not feel like they can handle lewdness, which is very strange to me, because 
Denise doesn't want to fight lewdness. She wants to settle down and go away. Prism wants to help the Bell's Hells in her own way, as she doesn't feel like she's necessarily a battlefield sort of character. But Bodor, who has this weird affinity for magic, if we're going to believe him, would be probably a good person to bring with them, because he's very powerful, and he's just like Imogen, where he's got this magic that comes from within. So realistically, he does need to rely on the gods to deal with this. Now, he, I think he is a divine sorcerer, so that might not be true. He might have some sort of connection to gods. That's just his class. I don't think he actually has a connection based on everything he said. But it seems very odd that he's always sort of sowing like the seat of wanting to not have the Bells fight lewdness or whatever is inside Ruidus, Pradathos. He doesn't want them to do it. He doesn't think they can do it. He even questions how powerful their friends are, almost indicating to me at least that he doesn't think that the group that he's with right now can defeat them. He's like, this group can't do it. This group alone cannot handle this. And then when the Bells sort of say, yeah, their group, that group that is away from us is very strong as well, he still questions it. And that's when he brings up, do you guys think you can kill Pradathos? Do you guys think you can defeat Ludinus? Like, even if they're a group. And he's just shooting them down often. And it seems really weird for him to do this because these are people who are trying to help him get back to his family. Which, to me, is a little strange. Not to mention, it sort of clashes with what he said to Orem at the beginning, or at the end of the episode before this one. So episode 61, the ending of it was, he went up to Orem in the tree and said, I go where you go. And now in this one, he's questioning if they're even going in the right direction. Should they be going to fight this enemy? Should they be doing this? He even questions him being with the group because he thinks they're going to get him killed. But then they bring up he's going to die from Pradathos potentially anyway, so he should come with us anyway. He's the only one who sort of thinks this way out of the, you know, the... The people who have joined them. Prism wants to go to learn more. Denise wants to go so she can get teleported to where she wants to go. He doesn't want to be there at all. In fact, it would have been better for him to leave with the guards in the church and just go to Vasselheim and get teleported back to the Sirius Mountains that way. Because, you know, it would have been a smarter idea to not go with these people if you think they're dangerous. But he's sowing these, like, bits and pieces of deceit to sort of make them doubt themselves, which to me is super weird and super kind of, I don't know, malicious. It has some sort of malicious intent behind them of wanting them to doubt themselves, which is very weird. Next, I want to talk about the literal sabotage that he has done to the group. He has done it twice now in the same episode, episode 62. While they were in the canyon, they were all getting some sort of weird vibes from the canyon they were in and how there's an illusionary hill right near them. Denise's whip is getting warm, and her whip is like a whip of warning, so it's like telling her, hey, something's up here. And uh, even with all this being said around him, he just screams. He starts yelling for people in the oasis with the blue flowers to, hey, we're here, we want to talk. This is not the place to yell, Bodor. Yet he is currently yelling, and potentially whatever is hiding in this hill is going to wake up and hear it. That is straight up sabotage. He he hears a bunch of stuff. Yes, it's metagaming. He could just, you know, you could chalk up the metagaming. But at the same time, they're all looking at each other. They're all realizing, hey, we need to be stealthy right now. And he just yells. He just yells. They're all in this dangerous position. They could be, like, swarmed from any direction. They're literally in the middle of, like, the bottom of a canyon that is surrounded by, like, de literally depicted as bog-like uh, plants. And he just yells. He just starts yelling and, you know, screaming for people. Hey, we're here. We want to talk to whoever is in the, the, the shrine. We're not, we're friendly. He just starts saying stuff like that. And then cut to them going inside this little shrine, inside the tunnel. Everyone literally says, do we want to drop the act of stealth or do we want to stay stealthy? Work our way through this slowly. And as they're sort of talking about this, he yells again and says, hey, we're friendly in Elvish and just starts to, you know, basically throw away whatever stealth options they have by yelling, which also makes Ashton yell because Ashton speaks primordial. So Bodar wants him to translate. Come on. It, to me, that's literal sabotage. They're saying we need to be quiet. We can't yell. We can't do anything stupid. And he just yells. He just yells for people. Hey, we're here. We want to talk. We're not, we're not like going to hurt you or anything like that. After a group discussion saying we're going to be stealthy, you do that. That is straight up sabotage. 
that is straight up sabotage. I have no other way to put it. That to me was two very clear signs of sabotage. Just putting that out there. So lastly, I kind of want to hold on a small little piece of information. And that is Denise beginning to doubt the story of Bodor's brother. It is so odd to me that we know very little about the brother. We don't know how severe this sickness is, but the implication is that it keeps him from going anywhere. He's too sick to go anywhere. And to me, that's a little strange. Because that would imply to me that he would be traveling with his brother a lot. If he's traveling to places on a cart with a reindeer, to me it means that his brother would be with him. So how is it possible that his cart, the reindeer, and himself, Bodor, ended up here in Isilra, but his brother, the only piece of the puzzle, didn't? Not to mention, when we scry on the house, the implication is he left his brother there at the house. So were they at the house? What's going on? Why was he in a carriage with a reindeer at his house? And why, like, that seems like a big, like, area to sort of poof and two people go missing. Not to mention we don't know anything realistically about his past. Everything Bodor says about his past is incredibly vague. He says, my brother's sick. We only just learned his brother's name Jasper in the last episode. So everything here seems a little too vague for me. We don't know how sick he is. We don't know the severity of the sickness. We don't know how close he lives to other people. How in the world did he get teleported with a carriage or reindeer and his brother happened to land completely in a different spot? Three out of four things ended up in one spot. But one thing didn't. To me, that just seems a little weird and a little suspect. We know that, yes, many people can be teleported in different places, but the bells were a little, you know, bell cells were a little spread out, so it makes sense that they could have ended up in different places. But with Bodor implying how sick his brother is, he would likely be traveling right with him, and then how is he the only one not there? This, to me, seems a little suspect. And Denise, I can't wait for her to sort of dive deeper into her suspicion of Bodor because I feel like that's the only way we're going to learn more about him if he's not evil or in some sort of way trying to screw the party somehow so I'm very curious as to how far Denise is going to go with this but yeah I don't know something seems off about his story it's way too vague and we just need to learn a bit more about him before I can truly trust this character I trust Prism and Denise there is something off about Bodor I cannot trust and there it is, my sort of thoughts or crackpot theory on Bodor. It's not really a theory, it's more things I'm noticing about the character that I want to share. Because something seems off, and I'm a huge suspect of guests now ever since you, and I honestly thought that with the group splitting up like this, they would be super like, like non-trusting of guests, but every single guest they've met, they just kind of accept with open arms, which is really strange for a group that one of the guests that show up literally was evil so i don't know also one more thing that i didn't really bring up earlier when bodor sort of he's done it i think he's done it once or twice now bodor literally fucks off he, he when they camp he went 40 minutes away to fish that just invites some sort of creature to follow them and i think that's what he's doing on purpose i think he's looking for a creature to follow them to follow him it just seems weird to me. A little suspect. Again, I, I can't trust this character. For, out of all the characters, I cannot trust Bodar. I love this character. I think he's great. And I do think that this little bit of trust makes me go, shit, I really like this character and I enjoy everything he does. And it makes me pay attention and watch him. So yeah, I don't know. I'm kind of conflicted on if I like this or not. This suspicion of him. But anyway, that's the video. Tell me what you think down below. Do you think Bodor is evil? Do you think he's got some sort of malicious intent? If he's evil, who the hell do you think he's working for? Because I think he's working for, like, the Fae. I think that would be very realistic that another person is working for the Fae. And he's half Elven, which would make sense for Fae sort of working with. So, yeah. That's just me. That's my thoughts, theory, crackpot theory, whatever you want to call it. I just wanted to share this because it's been something that's been on my mind. Basically, ever since we met Bodor, there's something off about him. But... I didn't feel like it was something I could, should talk about until one of the players pointed something out. And Denise did. Thank you, Denise. Thank you, Amy. Because now I have a video I can talk about. <laughs> so that's been the video. I'll see you guys on Friday for the recap. Peace.